Start it. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 97. Today is Tuesday, March the 5th, 2013. I'm your host, Christina Consolo, and with me today is Noki Travers of RadWatch.info and Jules. How you guys doing? Great, Christina. How are you? Good. Thanks for dropping me that interview from Kevin Allen. That was awesome. If you guys haven't seen this, Kevin Allen, also known as the master of many things and owner of Stop the Bullshit on Twitter, uh, went around the town that he lives in with his uh, anonymous mask on and a list of questions. And he approached people and said, hey, you got time for a question? And he asked them if they knew how much radiation was in their snow, if they knew what Fukushima was. Um, he asked them about, like, do they know that if they have a baby, that baby automatically has $52,000 worth of debt because of our national debt. And uh, people were just clueless. A lot of people just walked away from him, avoided him, so they didn't have time. There were a couple of college kids, though, that did spend time and seemed very interested and learning more so that was good but it's really a great clip and we posted it over the weekend and had a lot of people respond to it so I'll um, find it and drop it into chat for you guys is what? Kevin's show back on now uh, yes actually his uh, Hacker News started up again Monday night uh, 6 p.m. Eastern and his uh, Voice of Humanity is moving to Saturday afternoon uh, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, and that will be uh, show number one at the new time will be this week, this Saturday. Awesome. I'm really glad that he's back. Me too. Me too. I'm very excited. Hey, back, Chick. Hey, Noki. Hi. So what was precious about that video was the expressions on these people's <laughs> faces. They, they didn't know what to say. But the first look, their eyes, their facial expression was, that was a picture worth a thousand words. Yeah, I hope he does more of those. I believe he's planning on it, actually. He's going to start doing some feet on the street, so I'm very, very excited over it. It'll be good. Good, good. I tried, you know, I did that around Niagara Falls, and it, it, it's, it's really disappointing because when you're in these big groups of people, you'd think that more people would be open to, like, talking or you know people are just so weird like you say hi to people nowadays and they look at you funny like why are you saying hi to me you notice that i say hi to everybody everybody's <laughs> suspicious now that's what it is Everyone they conditioned is. us to be suspicious of everybody mm -hmm. mass paranoia yeah if you see something say something right. and i wonder how many of these that kevin's going to do before like somebody calls the cops I was waiting for the caps to come, to be honest, <laughs> and they did, yeah. so it was good. I noticed a couple people actually, like, spotted him that were driving by and slowed down their cars and rolled down their window and, like, said, you know, hey, said hi to him, and he ran up and, like, passed out his cards, and, um, but it, he did a great job with that, and, and we're really glad that you're back, Kevin. Over the weekend, Noki, what was up with the rads? It got a little crazy, uh, <laughs> uh. We had a couple high places. Uh, what you're seeing now is a phenomena that when we first started watching the charts, we rarely ever saw, which was a large ex excursion quickly or uh, slowly over a long period where they really elevate. So uh, it's a new kind of weather formation, and they're sort of like rad thunderstorms and um, so once again your region of the country is experiencing one of the greatest percentages of elevation Michigan Warren Michigan's up Sitka Alaska has been up 25 30 percent for about a month uh, you go to southern Arizona they run high Oklahoma's running very high uh, we average 60 CPM every day in Philadelphia now. So what's going on is that uh, whatever your scientist friends are telling you, that it's a 
infinitesimal amount of fallout reaching this country from Japan, they are not looking into it uh, scientifically from an expert level. Uh, just from the gut level, we all know that it, we're getting it on the jet stream every day. It comes right over to the Great Lakes and uh, it gets swirled around there. It's high everywhere. Uh, my personal readings are up over 20% this week. But yeah. Grand Rapids, Minnesota, giving us the most visually dramatic displays where it'll run from 38 CPM up to 130 in four hours, making these incredible looking graphs. Hey, just come to radwatch.info and look at our photo timeline. Uh, Seattle had an excursion this week, and uh, I talked to Hawaii, so hopefully they'll, Kauai will come back online. Yeah, I hope so too. And we really appreciate you being so diligent and uh, keeping up with the posting of those graphs. I mean, it's it's absolutely essential to try to get a handle on what's going on. And I've had a couple of theories about the Great Lakes region and about Minnesota. Oh, wait, one, just, one more. Yeah. Sorry. One for, because this is a point of interest for you. I've been monitoring our closest site to the Bayou sinkhole. And this guy is, get, he doesn't have the high readings that the big numbers have. But he's got crazy things going on. He's 50 miles away and 18 miles from a nuke plant. And so also that Louisiana area is uh, volatile, unpredictable, and with uh, excursions, uh, deviations from the norm happening more frequently. Sorry to interrupt. And that's not surprising considering it's a gaping wound in the earth right now and it's not getting better and in fact we have some news that we're going to talk about later something very important is going to be happening there later on this week you mentioned Oklahoma had some high numbers you know they had a 3.5 earthquake there yesterday so again that makes me think possibly right on outgassing possibly and the the Minnesota thing you know is downwind from all of these oil wells and fracking operations that have been going on in the Dakotas. And a guy had posted on a forum that he knows people that are working there and when they frack or open these wells and they're done pumping, they usually seal the wells up. Sometimes they use heavy water, they even use diesel fuel to close some of these fracking sites. Uh, concrete, you know, there, there's different things, ways of doing it, but it's very expensive. And he was told by guys that are working there that they're not even closing these holes up anymore. They drill, and when they're done drilling, they just move to the next place. So we need to try to get more information about what exactly is going on there. And if we can get drilling schedules, which I would imagine would be during the daytime, is that when we're seeing these readings? Is it primarily yeah, like actually, afternoon? Yeah, big jumps in the afternoon primarily. But mm -hmm. not always. Sometimes at night it'll creep up towards midnight. The quietest times are right before dawn everywhere. It's just like the winds are down. But, uh, yeah, I've heard the fracking thing. The thing is we had an earthquake and we were doing a little plume tracking. So we did have a Honshu earthquake last week. And yeah. we so we count the days before we start seeing... And if I see a, an excursion in Seattle, and then 18 hours later, Grand Rapids, Minnesota, I'm inclined to believe that that's a jet stream related. But the fracking thing, that's a real possibility. And of course, because the nuclides are much heavier metals than uh, a lot of things that apparently they're incorporating uh, some barium compounds, et cetera, these days. It's kind of, it's, it's all proprietary, but that's what I've been hearing. Yeah, the, the other thing about the Great Lakes, and I had mentioned to you and Jules before we went on air today, I, got, I just got my Geiger back. I had sent it to 
uh, someone in Washington State to recheck some of their high readings that they were getting. So this guy had it for a couple weeks, and, and I just got it back on Thursday. And so I've been running it, and on Saturday, Saturday evening, starting around 6, it went up to 29 microsieverts, and it just stayed there. And I was like, wow, that's really unusual. You know, I would expect to see some fluctuations with that. And then it would drop to like 24, and then it would go to 29 again. And so I, I you know, took the batteries out, changed them up, started it up again. Sure enough, it goes up to, you know, three or four times background and just stays there. And it did that for hours. Um, background... I'm seeing it's nothing these days to experience two, three, four, ten times your average typical background, especially in precipitation and the storms. Every time, right before, right after the storms and these big winds, we've had a lot of really big storms this winter already. Lot, yeah. Large air masses. The theory that I was kind of working on for the Great Lakes is that we have a very high moisture content in our air, which is called lake effect, which is why when we have snowstorms, the west side of the state always gets, you know, four times the amount of snow as the, the east side of the state. And um, for my mom who lives in Canada, she lives right on Lake Huron, she'll get four times the amount of snow. If I get an inch of snow here, she has four inches there. And it's just this lake effect because there's so much moisture in the air all the time. And how could that possibly be contributing to fallout? And over the weekend, I watched a lot of documentaries. In fact, we want to talk about Surviving Japan, too, and what's going on with the, the screenings. Uh, but one of them was a BBC documentary called Chernobyl Fallout. And there was something in this... Um, in this documentary that I had never heard before, and that was the night of the Chernobyl accident. The weather was really warm. It was unseasonably warm, so everybody was sleeping with their windows open, and they had this really humid fog that rolled in over all the, you know, uh, countryside, and that a lot of these kids that were sleeping with their windows open were probably dosed enough that one night to give them the thyroid cancer that so many of them developed afterward. And the uh, gentleman that's interviewed for this documentary, one of the gentlemen that was interviewed said that this fog event, the water vapor will combine with, in this case it was the iodine, high levels of iodine, and it will transport it into the body more readily because of the moist air. So I wonder sometimes if that's why we get such high numbers in this region. I mean, it could have something to do with geography and for the number of new plants that we have in our state as well that are continuously having problems, Fermi and its computer problems and Palisades and Cook. But, you know, it's something to think about, too. Could the no, moisture I, in the air I, have something to do with this? I think yeah, I totally agree with you. And, you know... I've been thinking about this fracking thing, and I don't think it accounts for the buildup on the west side of the lakes. Now, you're talking about this marine layer that exists over the Great Lakes, yeah. and, and it has a moderating effect on radioisotopes. Water moderates. Just like on the west coast, right where the marine layer is, you get a little bit different readings than you do just inland out of the marine layer. But fracking, you know, they're working, they move. This has been a steady buildup and, and building and building and building. And I think that we really need to consider, uh, first of all, I don't know how much is coming in every day. We... How, what's coming off the, the reactors at this point? It's nothing like that initial plume like you were talking about. That first whiff is enough to kill you. Uh -huh. But now that we're two years down the road, it, besides all this stuff they're pumping in the water, which is going to get in the atmosphere, how much is leaking out of the reactors and reaching the actual jet stream? No one knows. In this Chernobyl fallout documentary, one of the guys that they 
interviewed from the World Health Organization, Dr. Tavistock, had said that what became very apparent to him after the Chernobyl disaster is that scientists sometimes need to throw away any preconceived notion they have about what is going to happen to a population, especially when they're exposed to something that's never happened before. And when they started seeing all of these kids getting thyroid cancer, there were so many scientists in the community that were like, it can't be from that. They just completely disregarded it because they had never seen it before and you know perhaps there were also some you know some of their funding comes from industries that want to promote it as something that doesn't have major effects on your health but what that showed and it was only told really from the thyroid perspective they didn't get into Chernobyl heart and they didn't really get into other types of cancer it was just about thyroid cancer but he's, he said you know some people just don't have the capacity to do that in their brain. They've been taught one thing and they think that's how it's always going to be. And when you're faced with new evidence, you know, you come up on these people in the scientific community that will argue and argue and argue well, that can't be right, even though they're being presented with kind of overwhelming evidence that it is something new that we've never seen before. And it's very difficult to make these assessments when you don't have numbers that are coming out of TEPCO that are accurate because, you know, every few months they revise the numbers to show it was actually way, way worse than what they said three months ago, add a couple zeros, move a decimal point, you know, over a couple spaces, it's actually, you know, this many becquerels um, of water being released and, and sometimes they're saying it's only from one reactor where you have to consider that it's three reactors and the spent fuel pools and it is very, very I, difficult I, to get I, a handle on that situation that and it's it's going to be decades before we know for sure there there's an ocean effect so we know that cesium can go transport from the ocean into the atmosphere and go back up into the air so it we don't really know what's coming off the pacific every day you know we really don't know right and what's being generated from the storms in the Pacific, from the rad slick that's been, you know, moving its way across. I'm seeing some evidence, I believe, in Hawaii. I believe that some serious uh, isotopes have reached. There's coral deaths. There's all kinds of things that they haven't seen before. And we had months of very high readings before they forced the operator, really, to pull his equipment. He got bugged, and uh, and he still hasn't come back, and that's a shame. We lost a valuable station when that happened. Right. But that's it, it, those concentrations. Some of it is going to eventually reach the west coast. Obviously, the tuna have, have made it, so it's the waters. It's going to make it in the water. Water's everywhere on the planet. So it's going to go up into the atmosphere and come back down, and we're going to be seeing a building effect, and that's what we've seen. We have, the readings around the country are a lot higher than they were when I first started monitoring. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. only six more six days until the two-year anniversary of Fukushima, and over the weekend we put out a couple of promos for Surviving Japan. Christopher Nolan's wonderful documentary about the aftermath of the tsunami and the disaster. And there was a minimum of 50 tickets that had to be pre-sold for all of the theaters that they wanted to show this movie in. And I think we're going to have somebody that's me calling in in a moment to um, give us an update on where the screenings are actually going to be held. And we had a clip that we wanted to play, and I had talked about this Professor Cam Dallas before, and uh, I thought what what he had to say was so important. Noki, are you uh, set up to play that clip for I'm us? I'm all You ready? Yep. All right, here we go. It's a continual melodrama. Okay, it continues to unfold every day. The biggest surprise was the cooling ponds. 
You had a spent fuel rod now open to the sky, something never intended. Usually, spent fuel pools are down low, out of the way, where you can protect them. In the Japanese design, they place them up high um, near the roof and uh, outside the strong containment area, and you can't get near it. How do you put water back in the thing? That's why we had the, the infamous pictures of these poor firemen <laughs> running up and shooting water from a distance, trying to fill that pool back up, because you can't approach the thing. That Unit 4, it was built for yeah, maybe 400 fuel rods. They had 1,500 stuffed in there. They just kept stuffing them in there. It's the same thing in the American situation with all the cool ones we have. They're stuck to the gills, and what are we going to do with them? It's a ticking time bomb for us. We have to make um, some, some policy decisions and stick to them over a period of time instead of this jerking, you know, oh, not very concerned for a few months, and then they forget about it, which is what's going to happen here. It'll, the people forget about it. So what, what you're seeing right now when you look at uh, people's uh, opinion polls and, and, and it sways one way against nuclear power like that, but after a while, I'm telling you, it could sway another way when people are without electricity, when they're cold in the winter. People want energy, but they're not willing to make steps that we have to go through. With oil, of course, there's many issues there, political issues in particular. Coal has the issues with climate uh, uh, considerations. Um, um, and of course, nuclear has safety issues. Where are we going to get energy? Uh, I'm a very strong supporter of solar and green uh, sources of energy. Lack of energy has many other consequences, primarily economic, and also global in the, in the way since people will be competing for resources. For, for me, personally, uh, the big uh, the biggest issue is that um, this energy power generation is also generating nuclear weapons. They're inextricably, inextricably linked. And that's going to create more economic and social chaos than anyone can. I think there'll be a radical readjustment once the nuclear weapons make their impact. That, that will change a lot of opinions about nuclear power, I think after some cities are devastated. People had no idea what's coming. No idea. Yeah, what a Is clip from Professor Cam Dallas. And they were in a school at the time. That's why you hear all those kids running around in the background. They were using a new decontamination gel that they would apply to all the surfaces. And then that gel would absorb cesium and the other fallout and they would scrape up the gel and then it would have to be disposed of. I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can find contact information for that guy because, wow, would I love to have a conversation with him. And I think right now on the line we have Dave Parrish. Dave, are you there? I'm here. Hi. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Thanks for calling in. You're a friend of Chris's? That's correct. And do you have a scoop for us on where we ended up uh selling these tickets so the, the movie could be shown? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we uh, just uh, had the deadline uh, last night for a lot of the viewings that we had uh, potentially scheduled, and uh, we ended up with four select cities uh, that uh, will have viewings of the film uh, next week during the anniversary. So we're going to be in Los Angeles, uh, in uh, North Hollywood, actually, uh, New York City on the 12th, uh, San Francisco, that's, uh, that's the newest one. We just made it under the wire for that last night. And San Diego, looks like we're going to have a, a ton of people from San Onofre at San Diego. So it's going to be a great time. Great. I, I've seen it. I've watched it actually a few times. And, I mean, it's exceptional. And I'm not just saying that because it's about Fukushima. It is absolutely exceptional. I agree. I think it's a really, really terrific uh, uh, piece. I think, you know, Chris did a heck of a job. And, you know, the people that he got to help out, you know, with the editing and the, and the music and everything about it, I, th I think you're totally right about that, Christina. Yeah, and do you know if Chris has any plans to do a follow-up to it at well, some uh, point? Yeah, you know, I'm sure that that may be something that he, he uh, might be pursuing, um, but I think, you know, really he's, he's been so focused on getting this one out, uh, I'm not sure if he's really looked that far down the line yet. 
Well, we'll be looking forward to that if he does. And and I guess NHK has interviewed him recently, or they're going to be yep. talking NHK to him. Was was in uh, Seattle uh, last week and uh, hung out with Chris for a little bit. And started some interview stuff, and they're going to follow up with him uh, next weekend uh, at the sneak preview in, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, they're going to be shooting like a, a little follow-up piece, and they're going to put it all together and air it on NHK. So, you know, it would be something uh, that Miss Milky will be able to remix for us down the line. Great. I'm going to be seeing her this afternoon. Awesome. So uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let her know to look for that. She was the one that actually um, had the documentary and gave it to me to watch. Yeah, you know, it's I, I, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity for everybody who's concerned about this, you know, and, you know, everyone who's listening uh, and has been listening to your show, which is excellent, by the way. I have been, I've been listening the whole time, Christine. You guys are awesome. Um, you know, this movie has so much potential to reach so many people and change how they see things. You've seen the movie. You know what I'm talking about. It really kind of sinks in, you know, the importance of what it is that we're doing. Yeah, it's something I, I told Chris. I, I sent him a couple of links of how to get the film um, submitted to, like, Sundance and independent film festivals. And, sure. you know, every one of those sites has, like, all of these things that you have to meet. You know, you, you, have, an age, you have to have an agent, and they have all these requirements. But if there's anyone who knows the industry at all and can help Chris with that, um, please contact him. He's on Facebook. Or Dave, Dave, I see you all over Facebook all the time. I try. I, I try. Really appreciate all the information that you guys are putting out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything to help the cause, Christina. I mean, and like I said, what you guys are doing, what Kevin Blanche is doing, what Miss Milky is doing. You know, we're we're a growing army. You know, we are the media, and we're changing things daily. You know, all of our hard efforts are really starting to pay off now. And uh, I, I, all we got to do is keep going. That's all we got to do is just keep going. Yeah, something, you know, coming up on this anniversary, too, you, when you think back to, like, how it was at the beginning, um, I have a friend named Ursula Stiegel who who's on uh, Facebook quite a bit. And, like, her and I talked a lot at the beginning, and I really didn't have anyone else to talk to about Fukushima and, and so there, there was only like three or four people at first and for months you know just like the four of us would chat back no. and forth and now we have like hundreds of people that are sending mm -hmm. us information and are putting out their own information I we've really grown a lot and when I first started the rad chick page I had 20 likes for the longest time and I thought about just like giving up on it because it didn't seem like right. anybody cared and then, you know, there was a story that came out that went kind of viral, and then I had 100 people on the page, and now we're close to, like, 8,000, and we're mm -hmm. getting anywhere from 60 to 100,000 hits a week just with that one Facebook page. And I know oh, the information's I getting shared just from all the people who email me to, to, because they're looking for more stuff. They'll see one thing that we put out, and they'll say, hey, where can I see more of this? Where can oh, I learn yeah. more about this? I really want to learn about it. So it's yeah, great. It's a really that, great feeling to I see that. I, I totally agree, Christina. And I think that's something that Chris really wanted to, you know, hammer home with the movie with Three One One Surviving Japan. I think he wanted to show, you know, that it wasn't just him who wanted to find the truth about what was going on. You know, after the uh, disaster, after the tsunami and the earthquake, you know, dealing with Fukushima. I mean, the, the people in the affected areas, you know, it was it was tough enough for them just to get by. You know, for weeks, you know, no food, no place to stay. It was really, really rough, you know. And then, you know, the government wasn't telling them anything about, you know, what was going on with the radiation situation, you know. So, you know, people want to know the truth. And, you know, I think this movie really hits that on the head, you know, really strongly. I think, you know, if you watch this movie, you're going to want to find out more, too, you know. So I think about that guy that was living in his car a lot. Mm. And and um, this gentleman, he had like a little vacuum that he could plug in yep. so he could vacuum inside of it. And he had curtains up on the windows and he had like all the comforts of home, but it was in the back of his car and that's all he had. And he had yep. like such a wonderful attitude. He was so grateful to have that because a lot of people didn't even have cars. 
they had absolutely nothing and it was really hard because of all the bureaucracy in the Japanese government to get yeah. even food to get on some of these lists and that's something people unless you were there you have no idea what some of these people went through to just get their basic needs met Oh, I know. And I think it really illustrates something, too, Christina. I mean, when the chips are down, when you have a big disaster like that, you know, big government is doing what? You know, they're failing. You know, it's up to individuals like Chris, you know, and, and other organizations that he was, you know, affiliated with at the time to basically go out and volunteer and do it yourself. You know, if you really want to help people, you got to, you know, get off your butt and, you know, go do what you got to do. Find somebody who want, else who wants to help. You know, and I think, you know, that, that that's, that's a really uh, sort of a prescient uh, thing that, that Chris touches on in the movie as well, you know. I mean, we saw that, you know, during the uh, disaster in New Jersey last year, uh, you know, there's people coming out of the woodwork and volunteering, you know, bringing hammers, bringing food, bringing whatever they need, you know. Uh, the, the people, you know, are, are really the ones that, you know, are, are the ones that uh, can bring hope, can bring change, can do the things, you know, that, you know, we, we think our so-called elected officials, you know, uh, do for us, but no, you know, it's, it's really up to us. And I think this movie, you know, very clearly illustrates that. And, and there's maybe, you know, something a harbinger of things to come as we go along here. Well, um, I, I want to mention, too, Chris gave a wonderful interview to Libby Halevi from Nuclear Hot Seat. And I, I wanted to have Chris on the show a couple weeks ago, and he was sick, and then he's been so busy. And then I heard mm -hmm. this interview, and I was like, wow, that's such a great interview. Maybe I can just remix it so that all the people that listen to this show will hear it too. So that's up on YouTube also. It's 25 minutes long, and it's called Hot Seat Remix. Chris Nolan talks about surviving Japan. I put it into chat at the beginning of the show. So make sure you check it out and um, tell Chris best of luck. We'd love to have one of you guys come on after the showing and just let us know how it went and what kind oh, of response sure, yeah. you've been getting. I know, I know Chris is going to be attending both the L.A. and the New York screen. He's, got, he's basically going to hop on a plane in L.A. and be in New York the next day and uh, be at that. So he's, he's going to be uh, going crazy there. But, you know, once things uh, settle down, I'm sure he'll be happy to come back and join, uh, join you on the show. Great. Well, thanks a lot for calling in, Dave. Really appreciate it. Hey, no, and thank you again for all that you guys do, Christina. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget, you know, all, all you listeners out there, if you're in the Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, San Diego era, area, go check this movie out. You will not be sorry. Bring a friend. Bring a family member. If you care a lot about your people, this is the movie that you got to see. Guarantee you that. All right. Thanks again, Dave. Hey, thank you. That there's the real revolution right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a week and a half ago, I want to mention I did an interview with Karen Quinn Tostado on Wide Awake News about Fukushima propaganda, lies, sensory crimes, peace enforced through violence, and sketchy things that I saw go on in the healthcare industry including escorts being supplied by the drug companies to doctors during meetings. And I witnessed this over 25 years of working in ophthalmology, and Charlie McGrath actually hopped in at the end of the show, and um, when he heard us talking about Operation Tomodachi and how veterans, you know, pay the price under this guise of spreading democracy, and, you know, how do you sort out the lies and, and, it's, and not scare people off? Because when they wake up to one of these things, they kind of wake up to everything. And I didn't even, like, wake up to, like, the whole 9-11 thing until after Fukushima. Like, I heard about it, that there could be some, some um, very sketchy things that went on with that. And it's like I couldn't even go there because I knew once I did, I would get really probably sucked into it and want to learn more about it, but you you do, you wake up to a lot of these things all at once, and, um, you know, how people deal with it, like, how do you reset your moral compass when you've been told your whole life that things are a certain way, and you find out that they're not that way at all, and so this, um, this interview is called um, Fukushima Consciousness, Set Your Moral Compass, it's a little over an hour long, check it out, I uploaded it to YouTube last night. Something I had mentioned in the last few weeks is Loren Moray and I are going to be taping our interview 
this Saturday, and um, we've had numerous phone conversations about what we want to discuss. And when Paul Garner found out that I was going to be interviewing her, he asked if he could be part of the interview too. And you know, when I when I first talked to Paul about Loran, I said you have to talk to this woman. She's been in you know, she's testified in like eight different lawsuits and every case that she's testified in has won. She's very knowledgeable. And I thought, wow, you know, I'd love to be a fly on the wall if those two ever had a conversation. And we're all going to be because Loren and Paul will both interview with me at the same time. And Loren is going to give her take on what these 70,000 U.S. servicemen and women will be facing in the coming years, in her opinion, and I can tell you right now, it's going to be absolutely epic. Um, we will premiere that interview on Monday, March 11th, for the two-year anniversary of Fukushima. Saturday night, I will also be on United We Strike. It's an all-day radio show that's put on by Karen Quintostada, and it's the second Saturday of every month, and it's hosted by numerous talk show hosts that volunteer their time to give a half, a half hour update on what is wrong with our world today and how can you change it. And my slot's going to be um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No key. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got qu quite a bit of discussion that came out of the show that you and I did two weeks ago about Corium. Uh, yeah. And the Fukushima naysayers. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, there's a term for when your brain gets hit with something that goes against that moral compass you were referring to. Yeah. And it's called cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't allow themselves to uh, be aware that they're being traumatized at that level. But that that there is a term for it, and it's upsetting to your brain when it happens. I'm sorry. What did you ask me, Christina? Oh, I I wanted to know if you've checked out any of those comments yet under that show. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, we have a it's running. It's very it's very yep. entertaining. Yeah, there's there's a very special civilian scientist who has a plethora of YouTube videos that feels compelled to tell anyone who posts a, a YouTube video that with a Geiger counter that they must be measuring radon. And that's our big joke. It's all just radon, but guess what? Radon's not very healthy for you. Well, that gentleman in particular, although we won't mention his name, although I'm sure a lot of you know who we're talking about, is not a scientist. His background is in math. Computer and program. that radiation is kind of a hobby for him. So we will ask the geoscientist, Loren Murray, about what the scoop is on the radon. All right. Um, and I do want to remind everybody that it is very important to remember that some of the best discussions arise out of disagreements. Keep That's that right. In mind. Um, you know, the thing is, we're not nutters. N U T T E R S. Although he called us that. <laughs> um, that's how he refers to anyone who he believes has a paranoid anxiety regarding Fukushima because as far as he's concerned but we he's no Ray Masalas he's never he doesn't know anything about Fukushima as far as I can tell yeah I'd like to say hi to Ray if he's um, listening to because we really appreciate the work that he does and his um, meticulous graphing and can, keeping us posted about what is going on in eastern Ontario He's been a very big part of a lot of the discussions and um, everyone trying to figure out what exactly is up with the RADs. Uh, now, he's, he also has the best breakdown of what happened at the plant, the nuclear plant itself. So that, that's what you're wanting is, is someone who's rational looking at it and collecting vast quantities of the layout, what blew where, 
what days, when did this go? So uh, there, there are people who just captured a whole bunch of what happened. And, uh, you know, our undisclosed friend will tell you that the, the nutters bug the shit out of the scientists because we're hysterical. But the fact is, you can call these people and say, I've got these readings, I've got this, and they'll, they're in denial, all of them. So uh, it, it's not those of us who intuitively know that this is, we're in grave, grave, serious danger and that it's very much an ongoing event. Well, when I, when I uploaded that show to YouTube, I used a song by Garbage called I Think I'm Paranoid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speaking Christina, of this, you, yeah. you have the best nuclear humor of anybody I've seen. No, Ray does. Uh, Ray uh, does. His posts crack me up all the time, and I'll never forget when they showed... Um, some uh, they let a bunch of journalists go into the Fukushima plant, and when I oh, saw yeah. the original film of that, it was the first time I ever cried <laughs> about this because when I saw that they were fixing leaking pipes with like plastic bags and shower <laughs> curtains and tape and string, I was like, "We're so Jump. effed." Yeah. And Ray's response was, "All over Japan, people must be wondering what happened to my shower curtains." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's very, really great to have people that can laugh about that stuff because you need to. We, we need sick. to. We it's it's far it's hard to find the funny bone in this situation, uh, but once again, that's another perfect example of someone who took it upon themselves to become a documentarian and uh, another private citizen who for absolutely no uh, cash reimbursement whatsoever works tirelessly every day uncovering falsehood and bringing them to the attention of they're tired of, up there of hearing from uh, the government here's some Ray they, he calls them up and says what about this and Canada is in a, in a, is in a tipping point right now you know, Friday afternoon at 3.45 p.m., the State Department announced they had no issues with the XL key, Keystone Pipeline coming through. And they do this on late on Friday afternoon so the news can't get a hold of it and run it all week. But um, it's all connected. The tar sands are polluting our atmosphere terribly, our water sources. It's a huge boondoggle, and it's right next to the uranium reserves that all your big companies are locked and loaded to go into northern Canada right now and start some serious mining. In Australia, there's going to be some serious mining. So uh, they're fighting the collapse of the nuclear industry. There is a collapse taking place, and it hasn't really hit them. And they're trying to ramp up and come up with other stuff. And uh, this is an important time for s people like you, p anybody listening today. I'm speaking to you. Now's the time to put the death knell in this nuclear cycle, the industry. Uh, it's a very serious road. And we, we don't. We should stop and deal with the waste we have. We've taken it far enough. Absolutely. There's some news on the EPA front, although I just went to click on my links and my computer's completely froze. Uh huh. Obama is going to be appointing a new person to head the EPA because Lisa Jackson is leaving. Lisa Jackson is the one who, um, very sneakily behind everyone's back, including journalists, raised all the la rad levels after Fukushima. There was discussion about it, and then there was an email that an insider posted that verified that these levels were raised. And that is the big, like, bone of contention that I have all the time with these guys that are trying to say that it's nothing to worry about, is that you have to understand these levels, these numbers that the government says are safe, they raised after Fukushima when they should have lowered them. 
And that's what physicists have told me. They should have lowered them across the board because you have to take into consideration that people are getting this from multiple sources. Those numbers are only for one-time exposure over a year's period of time or over a lifetime, and it's geared towards a healthy 25-year-old male. Not a child, not a fetus, not a female. So he's appointing this new woman, and this woman that he's appointing just happens to be the one who was in charge of the RADnet monitors, which we found out after they were all turned off and turned back on again that there was out of 130 monitors, like I, one third of them didn't even work because they hadn't been properly maintained. So this is the person who's now going to be running. Right, DPA. Gina McCarthy is her name. Is that her name? Gina McCarthy. Right, and some of those RADnet stations are still not back online, and uh, that it's criminal the condition that that system was in. They were in negligent non-compliance. Right. And, um, so it, it that sort of there's got to be a conspiracy underneath the surface. How could she get picked to head the EPA? after having such a terrible track record running her last operation. Mm -hmm. You and I would be fired, but in the U.S. government, they promote you to take care of protecting the people. Yeah, and keep in mind that we will be paying that woman's salary, her <laughs> daycare, her vacation time, her sick time, her medical benefits, her um, IRA, her retirement plans, everything will be at taxpayers' cost. Uh, maybe she'll get along with the, the new grand lady that they just appointed as well. Oh, Lady Judge. Oh, we need to do a show just on her. <laughs> and I you can tell you right so now, up. she is no lady. Is it just us that sees this crazy stuff? I there mean... is such a trail behind this woman. Um... <laughs> She's evil incarnate, I'm sorry. She was like best friends with Charles Keating, who was the guy responsible for the savings and loan scandal in 2008. And this lady judge, which she only has kept the title of her honorable um, because she was appointed to the Security Exchange Commission. <laughs> when she was younger, after they retire, they're not allowed to use that title anymore, but she uses it. And then she married in to a family who ran The Sun, which, remember, The Sun in the UK, there was all kinds of crazy stuff about that. People went to jail because they were tapping people's phones to get information on celebrities and stuff like that. So she's part of that. She's friends with Charles Keating. She talked the Security Exchange Commission into allowing Charles Keating's um, company to be traded on the exchange, and she had taken out personal loans from this company that were discovered later that were very uncustomary, and yeah. she paid $51,000 to be kept out of the um, class action lawsuit that the savings and loan people who got screwed out of millions and millions of dollars sued for later. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. I spent a whole weekend reading about her. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have We won't get into it more than that right now. Trying to find this new head of energy, too, that has been involved with nuclear for a very long time. The guy with the new guy with the comb over. Uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about him, but I do I do need to share some important information okay. about the Bayou Corn sinkhole because we're getting close to the end of the show. All right. The folks in Bayou Corn got a, a huge boost this weekend when we learned that Erin Brockovich herself, who is the woman, took it upon herself to investigate PG&E, people that were getting um, sick in California. They made a movie about her with Julia Roberts. I don't remember the name of the movie. I think it was just Aaron Brock. Aaron Brock. She is going to be attending the town hall meeting this Saturday, March 9th, which is open to the public. That will kind of ensure that this is going to get national attention. Now, her law firm has been involved with the evacuees since the beginning, and they were going to be extending 
their services to the people that still live in the area and haven't been evacuated. In fact, I talked to their administrator several times on the phone, Chris Levinson, about how much these people need his help. Months ago, I was like, you, you've got to get in there. These people are being exposed. This is only going to get worse. You know, and I told him everything I know, and I gave him all my contact information, and um, he has a whole bunch of experts that have been working on this. So she's going to be going to the meeting. And that's very good news. And there were some other sinkhole stories that have gotten a lot of attention over the weekend in Florida. And there was a guy that went missing, and he's presumed dead, after a sinkhole opened up in his bedroom and pulled him into the ground. His brother jumped in the hole to try to save him. When the police got there, they pulled the brother out, but they were not able to get the guy and they think that he's dead. They've put listening devices down in this hole. They've done ground-penetrating radar. They said it's a huge fluid mass under the area. They did have to evacuate at least one neighboring house, as far as I know, and that it wasn't really a typical sinkhole. It was more like a chasm, and they uh, tore the house down yesterday. And you could see the hole, and it was actually on a cement slab. And cement slabs in Florida are like 8 to 13 inches thick. So when I first heard this, I was like, how could that be possible? Yeah, there's rebar and stuff that goes through there. But you could clearly see, now that they've demolished the house, that there is a really, really deep hole there. And there's no rebar whatsoever. Um, so that guy's poor family, um, that, that's got to be really tough. And since then, in the same city... There was another sinkhole that opened up yesterday. So the people around there are kind of freaking out. And then this morning in Tampa, there was another one that opened. I can't open my link. It was in Pinellas County. And a woman said that she heard a really big crack in her house and noticed the living room started caving in. And so she called 911 and they came and they said, sure enough, there's a big sinkhole under her house that's opening up and I mean they have a lot of these in Florida especially around the Tampa area but the reason that it's such a big concern is because of what we know about the BP disaster and the fact that there may have been a fault that was activated in the Gulf of Mexico and a little over a year ago the Tampa airport moved 10 degrees where they had to recalculate the global positioning so their planes wouldn't have a problem when they were landing and taking off. And they attributed this to um, magnetic problems from the Earth, but then it would have happened at every airport, and it didn't. It was just this one. So the, the whole airport just slid over? The whole airport moved 10 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> You never heard about that? <laughs> no, no, that that's no. I never wrapped my head around the whole airport just sliding <laughs> ten degrees, so that they had to recalibrate their GPS. Yeah, nothing to see here. You know, it's just uh, it's some kind of magnetic problem with the Earth. So anyway, it's all liquefacted down there these days. If you haven't listen to the interview that was done by Matt Simmons on True News. I have that on my channel, and you should listen to it, because he predicted all of this was going to happen. And, of course, then you wonder, well, what about the nuke plants in the area? There's three in Florida, at least three that I can tell from my how close do you live to a nuke plant map. Probably the closest one to Tampa would be north of there, Crystal River. East Coast, there's St. Lucie 1 and 2, and then uh, way down near the, um, it looks like a little bit south of Miami, is Turkey Point 3 and 4. And then around the Gulf of Mexico, of course, we have two plants in Louisiana, Waterford 3, and the one we've talked about a lot on here, River Bends, because of their problems with their pipes breaking underground and huge amounts of tritium being reported. And then uh, if you followed around South Texas 1 and 2, also, so we have a number of nuke plants that are around the Gulf of Mexico. Can you imagine if a sinkhole opened under one of those? Um, crustal destabilization and sinkholes, it's something that I've paid attention to because you, you really have to, to understand the significance of the risks of these plants that are operating. 
you know, the increase in earthquakes that we've had, these geological events that are happening all over. Um, and, and Noki's had some people who asked him, why is Christine always talking about the sinkhole? Well, the sinkhole in Louisiana had radioactive waste that was deposited there in the salt cavern, in one of the salt caverns from a uh, pipe scale, which they call norm. And, you know, we had levels that were 15 times over background reported at the beginning, and there's been no follow-up since. If you're a resident of Bayou Corn, I will send you my Geiger counter to you so you can take some readings for us as well. We will be back on Thursday. Share love, caring, and concern for your fellow man, and stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Noki. Thanks for the We don't like to do too much explaining. Story stay the same, I never changed it. No noon, we don't feel that. F*** a fake friend, where your real friends at? We don't like to do too much explaining. Story stay the same through the money and the fame. Cause we started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. Hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. We're in beautiful downtown North Conway, New Hampshire. What a peaceful little resort town. American flags and sheeple running around everywhere. I'm just driving home from some errands. And you know, it's one thing to sit here and bitch and try to wake people up online, but really, we all have to get out there. So I'm going to go home and... I'm going to write up a few questions on paper and tape them to myself. I'm going to throw on the mask. And I'm going to come down while it's a busy day and ask these people if they know anything about Fukushima or do they know that their grandbaby owes over $52,000 and so do they and things like that. So anyway, I'll be back with you momentarily. Much love. Many thanks. Hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. Well, as I told you just a minute ago, uh, I'm going to get out here and ask some questions. You can see we're all suited up. I've got questions. I want answers. And more importantly, I want these people to understand that they should have questions as well. Uh, I'm going to see how many are willing to talk to me just for a minute, answer a couple of questions, and move on. Group of people up here. Town's slowing down a little bit, but this is always a busy place. You can see there's people everywhere. So I'm going to spend a few minutes because, you know, you got to think globally, but you got to act locally. you got to get off your ass and do something. And even if you just wake up one person, it's worthwhile. Uh, a lot of young people come here. People are thinking about having kids. I want to know if they know how much those children are going to answer uh, for. How much money are they going to owe? So let's see if anybody's willing to talk to me here. Coming up, some young people. Hi folks, how you doing today? Good, how are you? Got you guys mind being on video? Just two minutes, a couple questions? Sure. sure. Do, do you know how much radiation is in the snow? No. no. Do you know why I would even ask you that? No. Do you know about Fukushima blowing up about two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, uh, do you remember like 24 hours later, Mr. Obama said that no radiation was coming here? Sure. 48 hours after that statement, he also, in that statement, told you not to prepare, not to do anything, to inform yourself and that he would keep you informed. He made no public statement since then. 48 hours after that public statement, the first wave of radiation passed over the West Coast. You know the thing about the snow? It attracts even more radio radioactive particulates than does rain. Everybody that comes here to ski right now is snowing on radioactive fallout from Fukushima. Did you know that? I can't tell you how much is in there. That was Mr. Obama's job. Do you guys plan on having kids someday? Maybe. 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 Possibly. You know, you're hard to say. You're young, right? Yep. Do you know that right now you owe over $52,000, as do you? <laughs> your mom does. Your dad does. Did you know that? No, I did not. Did you know that the United States is $16 trillion in debt? I did. Yeah. That means that you, me, him, her, we all owe that equally. So if we owe 53000 almost now, how much are your children going to owe? A lot. Is that fair to them? No. System doesn't work. Ladies, enjoy your weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. Here. Thank you. Um, I'm not anonymous. I'm out here in the mask because you can be. Check out my website, connect with me online, 
And yeah. enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Awesome, young people. No clue. And really, you know, they're young. They shouldn't have to worry about this shit. Uh, let's get some adults here. See if we can get somebody to uh, talk to us that's an adult. They're probably busy. They'll see the mask and run away. Scared to death. Ridiculous. We don't want to bother anybody. So let's see here. You look like you want to answer some questions. I can answer all kinds of questions. You can. How much radiation is in that snow? I don't know. No? No. You don't know why you don't know? Do you know? Not exactly, but I know it's there. I know it, it fell from Fukushima. Do you know that you owe over $52,000 right now? I don't owe anybody anything, my friend. Oh, no, sure you do. Oh, no. Are you no, an American citizen? No, from Mars. You're from Mars. I am. That's a, probably a good place to be right now. Yep. Are you visiting or do you live locally? I live here. Do you? Yep. Do you, can, can you tell me why with 65% of the population on prescription pills, we spend money and throw people in jail for possessing a plant that will remedy over 150 different ailments. You don't got to preach to me on that one. I'm with you 100%. Appreciate your we, time, buddy. We open up the I'm out here in a mask today, we, not because I'm a Amazon. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amazon. That's where you can get the mask. Yeah. On my website. I'm not anonymous. You can be. Right on, Much guy. love. Thanks, man. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi, ladies. Hi, can I, t I got questions, can I have two minutes? No? Hi guys, how you doing? What's happening? You're just standing there holding the dog, you got a minute for a question? Nah, I got no time. You got no time? I got no time. All right, enjoy your weekend. No time. Ah, good Lord. No wonder we're in the mess that we're in. Of course, most of these people don't live here, so they just come to, Enjoy the beauty and shop. See, we consume. We don't make anything. We just consume it all. It's pretty funny, though. It's, it's, it is encouraging that the younger generation so far are the ones that will actually speak to you. The older people that are responsible for the younger generation don't seem to want to answer any questions. Hi, folks. How are you? Can I take two minutes, ask some questions? Depends. Depends. We have kids. You have kids? So it depends on what the questions are. Well, the question is, do you know that the snow that most of these people are skiing on right now has radioactive fallout from Fukushima? And, and it will affect right these now, kids? So we can move on, okay? Because we don't want the kids to talk about that right now. Okay. So go Enjoy your weekend. They don't want the children to know anything. That's outstanding. Another good reason we're in this fucking mess. Oh, good Lord. Hi, folks. How are you doing today? Anybody have two minutes for questions? <laughs> Nobody has two minutes for questions. Economy's collapsing. Snow's radiated. Nobody has time for questions. Huh. That's amazing. Unbelievable. And we think there's a hope. Hi, folks. How are you doing? Anybody have two minutes for a question? Okay, thank you. No? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It makes you wonder why you would even bother wasting your time. You know? Hi, folks. How are you? Anybody have two minutes for a question? Yeah, that's okay. Not Thanks, today, thank you. Okay. Enjoy your day. Well, they don't have time for questions. They probably aren't going to take the time to find the answers either. What a shame. Ridiculous. Hi, folks. Got two minutes for question? No, not today, bud. Thanks. Not today? Okay. Takes a lot longer to find the answers. Just remember that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Little do they know they're gonna owe more than it takes to put their kids through college before they're even born. Ridiculous.
Hi, right, folks. I'm asking questions. You got 30 seconds to answer well, a question? I am, I am more than 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. If you owe over $52,000 right now, and I do and she does and they do as well, how much are your children and grandchildren going to owe? Oh, probably a lot. One more question. How much radiation is in this snow from Fukushima? I'm not sure. Masterofmanythings.com. Well, they're not sure because their president didn't inform them. Well, maybe we'll have better luck on this side of the street. It's where a couple of the local bars are. Maybe it'll we'll be loosened up a little bit. Huh. I'm out asking questions. You don't have a lot of time because you're in traffic, Thank but you. go find some answers. Now, there we go. That's encouraging. People are stopping and waving. Great. Hi, folks. How you doing? I'm asking questions today. Does anybody have just a few seconds for a question? No time for questions? Just one question? Nobody has time. It takes forever to find the answers. Good Lord. That's why we're not asking, he says. Huh. Imagine that. How again are they able to get away with all this? Oh, well, you got to consider that 65% of these people are uh, on some type of prescription drug that makes them not really give a fuck. And the rest of them, they're fluoridated and chemtrailed. And... Hi, folks. Hello. I'm asking Hello. questions today. Do you have time for a question? Uh, not today. Not <laughs> today? Disgusting. This is America. You could do this in any town, and it's probably going to be the same, folks. Okay. Masterofmanythings.com. Find answers. Got to send them there. You got to wake people up, you know. Hi, right, folks. How are you today? How are you? Time for a question? I got questions. No, no questions. No? What a shame. No questions. It's ridiculous. These people. Huh? Don't care? Well, I guess most of these people are unaffected. They still have money to vacation. For how much longer? Maybe that's a good question. I'll ask them how much longer they're going to be on vacation. Everybody's scared to death. Hi, hey folks. How are you doing today? I'm out asking questions. You got time for a question? No, I don't. No? No time for questions. No, oh, that's too bad. Let's see here. There's a dog lover. Maybe they got time for a question. Thank you, bro. I'm not anonymous, but you can be. Hi, right, folks. How you doing? I'm out asking questions today. Anybody have time for a question? No time for a question. Uh, maybe they're hurrying before the collapse comes. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm out asking questions today. You got time for a question? Uh, not today. Not today. Well, I guess that tells you how quickly we're going to turn things around in this country. Nobody has 30 seconds for a question, huh? The young people seem to. The younger generation. They must have a lot of questions. Well, I guess if it's ineffective, then you don't waste your time. So we'll call it a day, get this video uploaded, but you know, hey, at least, uh, at least some few people were provoked today. Maybe it only takes one to be worthwhile, you know? And the younger generation, when they hear things that sound wild, they, 
they do get off their asses and they research. Those two young ladies probably Google something up later and at least inform themselves before they have children. Anyway, getting ready to storm. Much love, many thanks, and I'll see you soon.